The development of messenger RNA vaccine has been long in the making. Our next guest is a pioneer in the field. Welcome to PMAC 2021 interview series. I'm Pavit Pimvijit and with me is Professor Drew Wiseman. Tell us a little bit about your academic background. So I, I was interested in science since I was a little kid. Uh, my parents used to joke that I took everything apart in the house. So they would try and use the toaster and it was in pieces. Or they would try and open a door and the doorknob was in pieces. They were not joking when they said No, this. no, th this is absolutely serious. So <laughs> I, I was always interested in science from a little kid. When I went to college, mm. I fell in love with basic science research. And I actually did a, a master's bachelor program in four years. And then I went to medical school and did an MD PhD program where I studied immunology. And then after that, I, I completed my medical training, went to the NIH where I worked for Tony Fauci doing HIV research, and then came to Penn uh, and started doing RNA with Katie. So all in all, how many years were you sp did you spend in the field of immunology? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably 40 plus. So I, I'm an immunologist and, and immunologists are interested in vaccines. And when I came to Penn and set up my own lab, I wanted to study vaccines, and I could. Okay, wonderful. And before that, uh, mRNA is not very popular in the, in the scientific community, and then you, you pay your attention to mRNA. Why so? So what we were interested in was making a better vaccine, because for HIV, all vaccines had failed. Mm. So we were open-minded and we wanted to try every possible vaccine, RNA, DNA, protein, peptides, whatever we could do. And we didn't want to, we didn't want to throw out anything. So RNA was an important component. There were a handful of people in the world who worked with RNA and who were interested. And I happened to run into one of them at the photocopy machine at Penn. Okay, and that is KD Carrico, of yeah. course. And uh, how many years were you were you persisting all throughout this? Yeah, so Katie and I started working together around 1997, 98. So it's been you know 25 years. Okay, and, and you never gave up on this idea, even though it was it was against the grain, so yep. to speak. So I, you know, I, I I joke that I had hair when I started. So it, it was a lot of years of difficult writing, of not getting money, not getting mm -hmm. recognition, really being told I was crazy and I should move on to something else, but we never gave up. Okay, so how did you motivate your team to go through this dry period? Yeah, th that's always difficult. We had enough other projects uh, you know, the, the problem with science is that you can't have no results for a long time because mm. people won't give you money. Mm. So we were working on other projects that weren't directly RNA related and that kept us funded. Um, I never gave up on RNA because we, we kept generating good results and interesting results. So we just, we kept going and we wanted to understand how to make it work. So when COVID vaccine was announced that it worked, how did you feel? So, you know, my, my family gives me a hard time about this. Why? You know, Why do they give you a hard time? Well, you know, because, you know, it, it, it's a fantastic feeling, mm. but I had already moved on. I was already working on other vaccines for other diseases. I was working on gene therapy for sickle cell anemia. You know, in, in my mind, we had solved COVID-19. It was time to do the next thing. So you were sure, even before the results came out, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to work? Yeah, I, you know, I, I knew from the beginning uh, when I saw the amount of antibody produced, I, I knew that it was going to work. Okay, so what are the things are you doing, are you working on now? So we've got an enormous number. We've got a bunch of vaccines for things like malaria and mm. HIV and hepatitis C. Th those are diseases where vaccines have failed. People have made vaccines, they, they didn't ha get good results. We're seeing good results with RNA. We have 
new uh, gene therapies. And, and so the, the big thing is sickle cell anemia occurs in 200,000 people a year in Africa and India. In the United States, you can cure it. You have to take bone marrow out of a patient, infect it with a virus, and give it back. Mm. You can't do that to 200,000 people a year in Africa and India. We invented a way to deliver the genes with a simple IV injection. So now we can go to Africa and India, inject 200,000 people, and cure them. Um, and we're expanding this to many other genetic diseases and other diseases. So the, the potential is enormous. Absolutely. And how long, how do, how long would the effect last? For, you, forever. Wow. It, it, it's a permanent cure. Wow, sounds wonderful. How many years out before we get to see this, you think? We're hoping to start clinical trials in about a year. And gene therapy is slower than COVID-19 mm. vaccines. It might be five years before people are being treated. Okay, well, that still sounds like a wonderful future. Yeah. What, 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 uh, what advice would you give to the young scientists and doctors that come, you know, that might follow in your path in the future? How, how, would you, how are they going to you know, persist through all these uh, obstacles in their yeah. lives? It, 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 it's a great question, and, and there's a few different levels. So the, the, the first is I, I talk to a lot of high school kids, trying to tell them what science is and get them interested in science. And a small percentage of them will be interested. I'll take some of them into my lab and I try to encourage people that have any interest in science into going into basic science. Once you're in basic science, you have to understand that it isn't a clear walk in the park. There are setbacks, and there are often more setbacks than there are advances. Y you have to persevere through those setbacks. You have to have a project that you believe in, that you think is going to work, and that you're willing to put up with all the negative things that happen and continue pushing. Mm. But nowadays, you know, the internet uh, age, they want to fail fast and fail early. What do you say to that? Yeah, you, it, it, if that's your view, you can't be a scientist because you, know, y you can't do an experiment and expect a positive result the next day. That, that just isn't how science works. It's, it's months and years of work to get good results. Well, thank you so much for your insights and your inspiration to us all, I think. And uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that was Professor Drew Wiseman, recipient of the 2021 Prince Mahidon Award. You're watching PMAC Interview. Stay tuned and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.